Hi and welcome to another Hopper Internals video. Um, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough about how you get started um, on your... It's just a sort of a repeat of how you get up and running on a microcontroller. And then the thing that's different is I'm going to show you um, how to figure out what's going wrong when things don't work out this, the way they're supposed to. Okay, so let's start this. So this is uh, Gordon Henderson's uh, Mandelbrot again. It's just a good a good demo. So I suppose you've got your program, um, you've compiled it, uh, and you're testing it on Windows. This is on Windows. So you're happy that you your program's running on Windows pretty fast, 19 milliseconds. And <clears throat> you're ready to go and you've, you've figured out that there's the system IO class, which is a wrapper for screen and serial port so that you can quickly switch between output and input um, in, in, the, in the Windows console and switch to the serial console. So we'll switch to the serial console. And then the other thing we need to do to go to the microcontroller is we need to make sure that we're generating an IHEX file here. That's the file gets transferred to the microcontroller. Uh, you don't need it for Windows, but you absolutely need it to upload to the microcontroller. Um, I always run the disassembler because then when things go wrong, I, can, I have the disassembly, I can go and track down where an error happened in the disassembly. All right, so we rebuild that. And then let's go and switch back to um, have a look at how we get up and running on Arduino. So um, what have we, we've configured? We've, we've got our, our board, which is I've got a weight share RP2041 here. Um, that's your board configured. You've got your serial port configured. Very important. You need, by default here, the entire four megs of flash is uh, for program uploading, but I want most of it to be for the file system. So I only keep one meg for the program and because it's more than enough and three megs for the file system on the device. Another setting that's easy to forget is the optimization setting. Always set it to fast. It does make a difference. I have benchmarked it. Then in the um, Hopper Portable Runtime, in the configuration file, um, this load auto to true uh, loads the last program that you uploaded. When the, If you reset your microcontroller, it will automatically load up the last program that you uploaded. If your program is con is crashing, that's probably not a good thing. You probably don't want it to automatically load and crash every time, but uh, let's just, that's the default. We'll leave it on true. And then um, instead of, this is not a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is the default in here. It's a WaveShare RP1. And this is only to set the pins correctly in what's different, because most of the RP2040 uh, devices, uh, microcontrollers are very similar. Anyway, I've got my settings the way I think they should be. Now, with most of these devices, these RP2040 devices, um, to make them appear as a flash drive, you can you unplug it. Um, this is just a regular USB plug, the device. You hold down the boot button, and you plug it back in. And then it appears as a USB drive. So you could, uh, in future, we'll just make it so that we have default you have two files that you could drag across but for now we're building and uploading so we hit the build and upload in the arduino ide and we're scanning and we're flashing and we've flashed our device right so now it's important not to have the serial monitor monitor console open in the arduino ide if you have that serial monitor open then Hopper can't connect to it via the serial port. So we're, we're ready now. We've built, um, we've, and now we're going to run the debugger, which is to run the debugger here is start launch the debugger, which is F5. Okay. We launch the debugger. Title bar changes to green, which means we're in the debugger. And at the bottom of the screen, it says it has successfully loaded, uploaded Mandelbrot.hex. So that's the iHex file that's been uploaded to my um, to my device and now I can just F5 to run it on the device so now I'm going to draw the random Mandelbrot on the device and this is the serial console up here this black area so we should see this Mandelbrot 
um, appearing in that uh, console and it does and then suddenly it doesn't so um, let's do that again we'll do a you know reload it's reloaded it up again and uh, let's f5 again and there we are so it, it crashes again at the same place this line which usually means it crashed just before this and it's got all sorts of information here um, program counter location this is the error error zero a and I'll probably document this somewhere else but for now if you go to the C sharp source for the um, hopper.net hopper runtime for the Windows runtime you can see that OA means feature not yet implemented so um, and and a lot of the tools will write that out in full anyway um, sometimes these kind of crashes don't appear in the symbolic debugger so the symbolic debugger fails and you see nothing happening like it might just hang and never come back so there's another way you could use the hopper monitor which is the low-level debugger and again we have to up first upload it upload Mandelbrot now it's uploaded it to the device and then run it so let me enlarge that so same error same location 19f s2f and OA which means not implemented so s2f right uh, at address 19f now this is why we want to generate um, why we want to always disassemble when we compile so that we have um, the, disas the disassembly that we can go and inspect so let's say show debug is where the disassembly items are for two Mandelbrot dot hopper assembler and we want to go to address 19f and 2f is interesting to us so let's go down the left we see the addresses there's 19f where is it there and that's probably the line after the error it's where the program counter is now the program counter failed probably on 19d we go across syscall 02f so s2f makes sense and again it's at the same location we saw in the symbolic debugger so what it's telling us really is that this api this system call has not been implemented um, on this runtime and that is true um, so I deliberately injected a piece of code um, into into the example that I knew would fail so let's go have a look so it's not serving any purpose here I just did you know byte equals screen cursor get get me and, and it could exist on the devices it just I just haven't got around to implementing it yet um, so like if we get rid of that um, and then we go to the hopper monitor and we load handle blocks it uploaded it to the device and now I'm control F5 and now it's running on my little device so um, let's just fade back to that so I just did that for the purpose of the example to show you that if you get one of these ugly error messages well firstly it might not even appear in the um, uh, in the symbolic debugger so you might have to use hopper monitor to see it and secondly you can track it down so there's three different versions of that there's s and the two character hex code there's l and the two character hex code and o and the two character hex code and s stands for uh, system call l stands for library call libraries things like the graphics cards and that sort of thing and the gpi opens stuff that's very specific to microcontrollers and is not um hopper specific you know it might not exist on a 6502 machine or a, or a z80 machine or even on windows like there's no gpi opens on windows so that's what library calls are. library calls are things that are specific to a platform whereas system calls should be everywhere and then the third one is opcodes so there might actually be a virtual machine opcode that doesn't exist yet on a certain platform for example um floating point opcodes don't exist on the 6502 runtime yet anyway you might run into one of these kinds of cryptic crack me uh, crash mess messages and that's what it means and I can usually figure out what it means from a screenshot 
if you send me a screenshot. Uh, but it's also helpful to maybe send me a screenshot of um, that line, that area of the um, disassembly so that I can confirm that it absolutely is that. There are other instances where these catastrophic failures happen, uh, unavoidable failures. Um, for example, uh, in the guts of the runtime, uh, it might have a memory allocation failure. Like if you run out of memory, you know, run against a hard limit. Uh, that's a good example. Or if you have some kind of hardware failure uh, where the driver initialization didn't get the expected results. You know, you try to initialize something that wasn't plugged into a machine. So catastrophic failure that's sort of unavoidable. Uh, they appear in this form. Anyway, now you know um, how to start digging into them and how to figure them out. Uh, by the way, this is a pretty cool little device. Um, you could easily 3, 3D print a little case for it and it works like a little USB stick. You just plug it into your USB, USB drive. Neat little, neat little, and you know, it's an RP2040 uh, processor just like the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll put a link in the description as to uh, where I got it from. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I look forward to your feedback.